Hi, and welcome back to another episode of How to Hack. So today, the primary discussion is how can we play defense? We have discovered so many different kind of attack methods, techniques, and trying to get access into confidential systems, critical databases, SQL injection, mobile device attack. So we're going to play defense today. We're going to talk about network intrusion prevention system. We're going to learn about how we can use rules, policy settings on network protocols, on services, on a different kind of potential attack that could come into your web application server. That could be on a network. It could be ARP poisoning. It could be different kind of combination of techniques coming in that are attacking and disrupting your network. So in your enterprise network environment, chances are you have different specific policies, specific route of network traffic information in the environment. And using SNOT, which is a network detection system, we are able to filter out using all these different kind of policies and be able to identify specific attacks. So it could be information leakage, it could be attempting buffer overflow against certain services, and we are able to detect many of this information through a software-based open source network intrusion prevention system. So let's begin the tutorial. So on the left side of the screen, I have Ubuntu running, so I can open terminal, and again, I can zoom in so that it gets the logic font and it's easier for you to see. In our enter IF config, and this time around, we have the inter network interface card as ENP0S3. So again, your network interface card is going to be different from mine, and chances are your IP address may also be different from mine. And in this case, I have IP address of 192.168.1.18. And on the right side of the screen, I have Kali Linux running, and I can log into Kali Linux. So as I log in to Kali Linux, again, it's gonna serve as the attacking machine. I'm gonna close this over here. I'm gonna launch a new terminal. And in the new terminal, I'm gonna zoom in a little more. So again, it's easier for you to visualize what's happening and a kind of attack we're attempting. So as I enter IF config, remember clearly, we have an IP address from the attacking machine as 192.168.1.17. So again, the tutorial for today is Network Intrusion Detection System using SNORT. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into sudo gedit and going into etc snort slash snort.conf. So this is the main configuration file of SNORT. So we're going to validate, understand the configuration structure of the configuration file for SNORT. And then we're going to run SNORT so that we are able to see the kind of detection that we can get using the NIPS. So I hit enter, it asks for a password for my sudo, I enter the password for user, and I go in. So over here we can see the, the file has a structure, and in this structure there are nine specific segments. So you have network variables, so you got to configure a decoder, base detection engine, and many other different capabilities for you to learn and to investigate on so that you are able to produce and maximize the value from the NIPS. So as you scroll down, as you scroll down, uh, one setting that I have key in is home net is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. So my home network on in this testing lab environment that I'm running on is running on a variable of the from, from 1 all the way to 254 for the IP address of 192.168.1. And of course, uh, external network, again, if you're, if you're running on an enterprise environment, chances are your external network may just be anything outside of home. So in this case, we have an example here that you can use. So this is the inverse of home network. And again, if you have DNS servers, you can specify them. If you have SN SMTP server, HTTP servers, and the likes, it, it can, the configuration can grow more complex as you, as you get larger. But one important case I want to really take note of are the rules. So over here, we have a rule path that we have set as a variable, and it's in the in the folder of etc snot slash rules. So this is a area where we're gonna explore a little more on because it's critical for the rule setting, the policy setting, so that in the security policy that you place in, it allows you to detect the different kind of attacks coming in. So as we scroll down, uh, what's really important is the list of rules that are available for you to actually, to actually use the lies that are available from the community that are available as smart of snort, and over here, for example, we can see the kind of different files that you can input in and you'll be able to activate them and they, they will be able to find out information whenever there are different kind of attacks. So over here, we got DDoS, 
we got DNS, but they are all commented out. So what is being in part of the rule engine is actually the finger.rules, FTP, ICMP, IMAPS, and the like information, uh, some miscellaneous multimeter, MySQL, if you're running SQL, uh, if you're running Oracle databases, you're running Oracle Solaris, again, you want to enable all these policies that are relevant to the system that you're monitoring. And again, if we go in depth into, for example, some of the rules here, we'll be able to see what a kind of traffic or policy that they input in. So for example, if I were to go into this path over here, so I'm gonna open a new terminal. Again, I'm gonna zoom in a little more. Uh, over here, I'm gonna click onto the view, zoom in, and zoom in a little more. And over here, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a sudo gedit slash etc snot slash rules slash uh, for example i've uh the ftp dot rules so when i enter and of course i enter my password to access the file so once i go in i see a new file that's open up and over here you have all the rules that are available as part of the verification so in this case we have a lot of a tcp coming from any network from any source destination and then from here we can see the port number 21 coming to home network. And then of course, if we look at certain types of attack that's coming in, we can flag them out. We can put a message that is an FTP, FTP, MMDB overflow attempt and, and the like. So again, we are trying to find out the different kind of attacks coming in so that with all these rules, all these signatures, we're able to detect the cyber threat. So as I, as I continue into the demonstration of technology, it's very important for you to understand how many of these rules work. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to do a testing. So I'm gonna do sudo snort dash capital T dash C etc snort slash snort dot conf, conf, uh, configuration dash I emp zero s three. So emp zero s three is the network interface card that I'm running on. So again, if if it's yours, chances are it's gonna be different. So when I do this, it will allow me to test whether my configurations are proper. So only when my configurations are proper will I be able to run snot. If not, you gotta validate the configuration, make sure that the parameters you're putting in are correct and proper. So once we have tested the configuration and it's good to go, all you gotta do is enter sudo snort-a console-q-u snort-g snort-c etc snort and then pointing to the configuration file again. And then of course your interface card that you are monitoring. And from there, you will be able to start monitoring against the cyber attacks. So I'm gonna go back to my Kali Linux now, now that I've enabled the monitoring on the Ubuntu operating system. So I'm gonna do, for example, a direct network mapper scanning onto 192.168.1.18. And what's gonna happen is the, it's gonna pick up directly the kind of attacks that's coming in. So over here, we can see is SNMP request classification is that this is attempted information leak. And again, we see another attempted information leak uh, against the, the operating system. So if I was to turn on another uh, information gathering tool, like for example, if I turn on Sparta, so Sparta is a great GUI tool that, that runs all the different kind of reconnaissance attack on Call Linux against the operating system. So I say, I wanna, target a specific IP address, which is 192.168.1.18. And I click add to scope. And once I've added the scope, uh, beginning all the scanning on MMAP, you see it's on stage one, it's running multiple services, it's beginning to kickstart the different services. And we see that on the backdrop, we, we see that Ubuntu is detecting all these different kind of attacks coming in. And of course, we see the IP address of 192.168.1.17 which is the attacking machine against the destination of 192.168.18. So we are able to perform the scanning attack against the, the operating system. And then of course we are able to detect them and we are able to respond to this type of attacks either by disabling the service or by stopping the attack altogether in a network. There you're seeing, we have used a software-based network intrusion prevention system, and we're able to detect a different kind of scanning, reconnaissance in the environment. And of course, if you were to try to use buffer overflow attacks, if you're trying to do SQL injection, 
There are rules and policies that are specific and designed for certain application servers. So one of the rules that you can see under the configuration file is actually a server Apache. So we are specifically designing rules and policies to actually protect a kind of web application server. And from there, the different rules will be applicable to this application server so that you can properly defend against it. So it could be certain kind of file traversal. It could be certain kind of injection coming in, a cross-site scripting request, cross-site request forgery. Again, we're able to pick it up within the operating system through the use of SNOT as a network intrusion detection system. And of course, in large scale enterprises that you are deploying on, you have many different servers. Your servers could be residing on the DMZ zone. Your servers could be residing on the sub networks. So again, your policies, your rules have to be different. And because network intrusion prevention systems generally uh, could, requires a lot of computation power. So you actually have to tap the network traffic, the data, the events, the lock information into a separate system. So that that system is customized and built hardy just to do network intrusion prevention and detection. And then from there, it's able to compute to you what are the potential attacks or offenses in the environment. So with that, we come to the end of the tutorial, and I hope you learned something valuable today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and thank you so much for watching.